Okay, the PlayStation 5. So maybe you saw that thumbnail and you thought, wouldn't it be cool if you get custom PlayStation 5s like that? Like that would look really neat, right? You can do it. This is a real PlayStation 5 that's been customized to, well, a Spider-Man theme. And I did this really quickly, right? This was truly done with very little effort. And if you spent some effort on this thing, you could create some crazy stuff. And I think over the next little bit, people are gonna go wild with these things. The reason why it's so easy to customize, two things. Number one, these side panels pop off really easily. I can't showcase it in this video. I've been embargoed not to kind of show the disassembly, but it's a toolless five second operation. Uh, but secondly, that white, plastic shell hold paint really well, like really, really well. So if you've been thinking of like spray painting or doing anything you want with these shells, it's awesome. You can go crazy with it. So I just spray painted these red, got a blue sticker up front, white spider stickers on the side, and I was able to make a pretty decent Spider-Man themed PlayStation 5. Like this isn't perfect. This isn't even like the official Spider-Man logo. It's just a white spider thing that I drew and cut out. But you can tell it's with a pretty casual attempt at this, it comes out pretty decent. I'm just putting this out there for people that have been interested in modding their PlayStation 5. It's very good for it. Now, the reason why I did this is because one of my favorite PlayStation games of all time was the Spider-Man game on PlayStation 4. I loved that game. And the flagship title for the PlayStation 5 launch is the sequel, Spider-Man Miles Morales. And this game is awesome. It's very similar mechanics to the Spider-Man on PlayStation 4, but it's just on another level. The graphics and the visual experience are really something special. And this is coming from someone who's pretty immersed in high-end PC builds, right? I love that stuff, but it's a visual treat. What they've done with Spider-Man Miles Morales is like, it's pretty cool. Now, the ray tracing in this game, a quick note about it. If you're unfamiliar with what ray tracing is, it's this rendering technique that gives games an extra layer of visual realism. So the new Spider-Man uses it and it looks awesome. So if you have it enabled in 4K, you're capped at 30 frames per second. If you disable it, you get gameplay at 60 frames per second, which is a lot smoother, but the visual fidelity that you get with ray tracing enabled is really nice. Now, in this scene, you can see Spider-Man just chilling on the side of the building, right? And there's reflections on the glass, but they're actually fake reflections. Like if you pan around, you can just tell. It's not an actual reflection of the environment. They've loaded an environment map onto that building. It's not a real-time reflection of what's happening. Like the billboards aren't reflected properly and even Spider-Man's reflection isn't accurate. And this is with ray tracing off. But if you enable ray tracing, stuff looks so much better. The lighting, the shadows, all of it's just a little bit more believable, but the reflections in particular are significantly better. It's a more accurate reflection. The billboards now change appropriately. Everything is mirrored the way that it would be in real life. And it makes the whole game look really nice. Now, last week I did a video on the PlayStation 5 controller. And the takeaway, if you haven't seen it, was that this controller is very advanced. It's got haptics, it's got the adaptive triggers. And in games like Astro's Playground, it's unbelievable. Like you can literally feel the materials of the ground as you walk around. It's done really well. DualSense is so much better than any other kind of rumble or like no one even comes close. Like HD rumble on the Switch, nothing like this. DualShock 4 is nothing like this. The rumble on Xbox Series X controllers is nothing like this. Nothing comes close. This is truly next gen controller, okay? But I have to say that the way that Spider-Man implemented the haptics and the adaptive triggers in this game, it wasn't great. Like there were a couple spots that were kind of special. Some of the cutscenes were cool, but I don't think they took proper advantage of the haptics or the adaptive triggers. And it was one of the issues I talked about, right? Because plenty of people are gonna be playing Spider-Man Miles Morales that don't have PlayStation 5s, because it's gonna be available on PlayStation 4 as well. It's, you know, it's difficult for the developers to commit that you know, development time to make a really robust haptic system in the game. It is a shame, um, but this is one of the things I was talking about. If you have a really well done haptic kind of component to a game, it's awesome, like an Astro's Playground. But if you don't, then it becomes this ancillary, like, like forgettable experience, which is what I felt like the haptics were like in Miles Morales. So I think for a lot of people, if you turned it off, like if you just turned off the rumbles and stuff in Spider-Man Miles Morales, I don't think it would change the game very much. But 
I await those games where they really take advantage of the controller because this has so much potential if it's done a certain way. Now in terms of battery life on the controller, so I plug this up to several games and just let them run. In Spider-Man with the haptics on, I got like five and a half hours. Uh, not a ton, but that's not a super haptically demanding game. Like it vibrates a little bit, but it doesn't go crazy. In Astro's Playground, if I stand this thing on a very rumbly part of level, I only got a little bit more than four hours of battery life. So depending on the type of game you're playing and whether or not you have haptics enabled, I'd estimate between four to maybe seven and a half hours of battery life. So it's got a bigger battery than the DualShock 4 controllers, but there's just so much more happening inside this controller this time around. So not a noticeably longer battery life per se. Now, one thing I noticed, there's no screws on this thing. And if you ever get to a point where you have to replace the battery, or if you want to mod it, like if you want to put, you know, scuff controller stuff going on here, it's a lot harder this time around. The thumbsticks are unchanged. They feel exactly the way that the DualShock 4 controllers felt. The D-pad, I don't love this D-pad. I don't feel like it's that different from the DualShock 4 controllers, but I've always found the Sony D-pads to be hard to use. Like if I ever play fighting games, I prefer a stick, but if I have to use a controller, I much prefer the Xbox D-pad. Like the tactile response there with the nice clicks is just better to me, but it's a very personal preference. So I tried a bunch of other older titles, like Street Fighter V plays really well, obviously, but every game I wanted to play was available as well on the PlayStation 5. Sony says like 99% of PlayStation 4 games are gonna be compatible. I think it's just mostly VR games that won't make the cut. And I finally tried Apex on a console. Like I've always played it on PC and I've never tried that Apex console experience. And it looks really good on the PlayStation 5. It's a very visually enjoyable experience. Now, one of the things I didn't love about the PlayStation 4 was fan noise. It was just weirdly loud. Like it didn't make sense to me that something that was so small and so elegant looking was also so loud. And it just got worse over the years, right? As dust built up in there, it was just stupidly loud. This system is so quiet, even on full load. And because it exhausts at the back, like if you have it oriented in a normal position, it's just a very quiet and pleasant sound signature. Like the Xbox Series X blows up the top. Not that it's loud or anything, they're both extremely quiet, but because this exhausts at the back, it just has a more pleasant kind of audio signature when you're around this thing. It does run a little warm, but I don't think it's an issue. I do think it's cooled very well. Now the system UI, is very different this time around, right? It feels more intuitive to me, but there's certain elements that I can't show yet because they're not final software. Now, there is no quick resume. This was something that Xbox Series X has and just allows you to swap between games instantly. Like you could have game A and then game B running at the same time and you can switch between them. It's a very convenient thing. It sounds really cool on paper. When I was reviewing this thing and I was switching between games, I was like, I really wish I had that feature on the PlayStation 5. I don't know if it's something they can implement in the future. Like it doesn't seem impossible. I feel like the technology is available. It has a good amount of RAM and good storage space. It's just, I don't know if they'll do it. But that being said, I don't know how useful that really is for my type of gameplay, right? It depends on the person. Some people are gonna really love that stuff, but if I'm not reviewing games, I'm just playing normally. I tend to just stick with one, maybe two games for a night. But yeah, no quick resume. The storage is super fast. It's got quick boot times, quick game loading times. It's really nice. The system comes with 825 gigs of storage, but you only get about 670 that's usable. The rest of it is used up by the system, and that can fill up quite quickly. It obviously depends on the games you're downloading, but realistically, when it comes to like AAA titles, eight, maybe 10 games of like high-end, fully decked out titles. The good thing is that upgrading the storage is quite easy. You can just plug up an external USB if you want. Like I connected an external SSD, worked fine. And you can pop it open and insert an NVMe. Again, I can't showcase it, like that would be disassembling it, but it's one screw. It's like toolless until you get to that part, you just pop open the thing, but it's one screw. So if you want to do it, it's a relatively easy and painless process. So my overall thoughts on the PlayStation 5, it's an awesome system. Like it feels truly next gen. The controller, the overall system just feels on point. If you've pre-ordered it or you plan on picking it up over the holiday season, I really think you're gonna enjoy it. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.